if I could get or try to figure a way to resolve the issue with the, the pins and needles in my left hand versus mm -hmm. more than the motion, like I can, I can use my arm, I can use my hand, but it's just the pins and needles. So it's, sometimes it's hard for me to, you know, do stuff that is very precise or even, you know, it sounds crazy, like even like to touch your, the in, inside of your ear, it's hard because my hand will shake because of the, the stroke. Um, so I'm just trying to figure out, you know, um, not like versus pain, it's just more control um, of yeah. my, in my left hand, my, my foot. Yeah. So that is, that is a classic problem um, with respect to how the stroke can impact your ability to control fine motor skills. Um, and especially, it sounds like you also have some impaired sensations. Um, and impaired doesn't necessarily mean absent, right? Uh, it could also mean altered sensations. And that's a very classic following a stroke as well, where the information that would normally tell you kind of if something was touching you or hot and cold or where your movements were, th those bits of information can be misinterpreted. Um, or, or I guess, and or those sensation capabilities are kind of ability to discriminate sensation. There's a classic, really fundamental task that our sensory systems do. Those can be less sensitive. And when they're less sensitive, we have um, difficulty learning from them. This is really interesting because when we, for instance, my classic example is going to reach out and pick up a coffee cup. Um, when you go to reach out and pick up a coffee cup, it's not just simply you per, you want you generate a specific movement and then it just um, happens, right? We actually will start the motion and then we'll learn, hey, I'm actually off, I'm off target here. I need to adjust. You can kind of course correct. And so um, what often happens is if we have impaired sensation, we will overcorrect and we'll get this kind of um, tremor or this oscillations that, are, that occur following stroke. These are classically called ataxias uh, um, in the clinical world. And this can make it exceptionally hard to do fine motor skills, um, like, what, like what you're describing, especially in the context if you don't have visual cues, because it's hard to, you know, manipulate behind your head or, you know, trying to negotiate, like scratching your ear, because you can't see it, right? Um, and neither of us can see this. And so you're relying on the sensory cues that are in our hands and our muscles and our skin for that information. Um, and so the, the modus hand in these cases um, can help improve those sensory motor capabilities by um, takes away your visual sort of dependence on learning and it forces you to learn to know where your body is in space because you have to generate motor programs to uh, perform various tasks and those tasks can be of a variety of, of sort of difficulty and complexity um, and i was actually talking with a guest um, earlier today um, about this sort of exact concept about how we need to work on, on, on having good capabilities to learn from sensory information and then generate purposeful movements. And that's very, very challenging. Um, but it sounds like you're interested more on like the, the fine motor side and trying to improve the precision and the reliability of those movements. Exactly. And precision and, and, and reliability is exactly what robotics can do because it has that ability to sense exactly where the movements are with high degree of, of certainty and it's reliable day in and day out right they're just it's a robotic device it can measure things it doesn't care if it's if it's hot cold whatever day it is um or how you feel right it's going to tell you an objective truth about what your movements are and it's going to help provide a training stimulus for you to learn how to perform those tasks reliably again and that's that's really the fundamental thing is it, it takes a lot of of movements a lot of repetitions to actually induce changes and become more reliable at generating motor programs. Basically, you know, to, for instance, scratch the uh, scratch your ear. Um, you have to be able to do it a lot in order to regain that capacity. And the modus hand helps provide a conduit by which you can actually get those um, types of rehab um, interventions.